Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're playing advanced prototype. You can see my stats in the top left if you're interested. Um, I'm running 28% critical. Uh, that's 589 critical in total. I have 1.3 global cooldown through alacrity, so we're playing high alacrity. We're running devastating vengeance to help with the crit loss. We're running the mastery relic because it's better in this situation. So we're not using the power relic normally if you actually have critical. You don't want to run the critical relic and you'll run the power one instead. I'm also running stimulated. Um, it's just a flat damage increase and it just helps with the critical loss to have more mastery. And I'm running mostly mastery without uh, critical augs at all. So I'm trying to get my critical as low as possible to amplify the I guess, troll of the, the build, I guess you can say. And then I'm running Shock Trooper, obviously that's your standard power attack uh, implant, you pretty much always want to run that. And then I also have Energized Vampirist to increase my sustained damage because that's what gets hit the most. So I want to try to recoup my losses for the most part through any means I can do. So to quickly explain High Alacrity, basically what's happening is I'm able to get off more global cooldowns uh, per minute. And obviously they'll start adding up. It also makes the game feel more smooth in general, so I'm able to react faster. Um, the game does limit you on your global cooldown. So you can only react as fast as the global cooldown is. Obviously there's abilities that are off the global cooldown, but most of those are just defensives and not offensive abilities. So being able to use your offensive abilities a little bit sooner than previously able to. Uh, it does make a difference, and there's some very niche situations where you can find it to be incredibly useful. Um, this is why Carnage, for me, is so much fun to play. Or I guess combat. Uh, because you get your GCD all the way down to 1.1 with the build that I run, and it's very enjoyable. So for the most uh, part, to think about like how damage works and whatnot on AP is that there's quite a few critical buffs. So for example, power, or not power, um, obviously power yield will give me energy burst, but energy burst will pretty much always be a critical. So more critical is only increasing the damage of that ability. I do not have to really worry about that ability not critting. Um, some of the other abilities have passive critical hit chance, and then obviously I get a critical buff with my explosive fuel. So normally if I had critical that would only be like boosting my damage in this situation it's making my damage not suck, um, if that makes sense. Some situations where I can get a lot of damage off, um, having fuel is just generally really nice but uh, we're not really taking this too seriously mostly because we're playing a complete troll build and we're just trying to have fun with it, you know. I played this uh, a couple times before I got into this match and it did pretty well. I was actually surprised. Uh, the other games actually did more damage than I did in this this match, but I feel like those matches were more so just about uptime and know-how. It wasn't really a, uh, a thing of like really showing what it could do because obviously even if I was running like no gear or different gear or whatever, obviously no gear wouldn't work, but you know, it didn't really matter what I was running in those matches because they were just so easy. Uh, this match is a little bit more straightforward, we're actually dying, our team's getting um, kind of like in a situation where we're just trading kills, which is fun. Or at least sometimes it's fun. Um, we do have two competent DPS with us, so that does allow for us more of a grounded view, I guess you could say. So like when you compare something and there's no other good DPS, like in the match at all, it's really hard to gauge how good something could be. So for example, let's say, oh, I did, you know, 19.5k on uh, combat like ages ago. Um, for the most part, none of the mercenaries really knew what they were doing. So I was just kind of like parsimming on mercenaries. And that's, you know, sometimes it's like that. Now, if I was playing against myself on AP, I would not be able to pull that off on Carnage because I would just be dead all the time. AP is just that much more oppressive compared to Carnage. While Carnage has good damage to kill an AP player, AP has way more burst and can basically front load a Carnage Brothers health bar in a matter of seconds. So there's definitely um, things that you want to think about. And then obviously 
um, not critting and stuff like that is a factor, but you can see I crit a decent amount, but I don't hit anywhere near as hard as what I usually do. So if I was running a normal build, obviously I would do more damage here, but that's not really what this is about. This is just uh, test things and have fun, um, but do take away with a grain of salt. Obviously having real gear would be much better. So I wouldn't recommend trying it unless you really just want to have fun. Outside of that, um, there's a few things I do want to point out. Um, hopefully the audio is a little bit better. I think I have it set up in a pretty good way now that hopefully it's, you know, pretty solid. Uh, I know that some people have issues. Um, I don't know if that's just my cadence of the way I speak or their audio setup. I really kind of don't want to say that it's their audio setup, but I do sometimes do feel that way. Um, mostly because I tried multiple different devices. I have Audio Technica headphones. I have, um, Beats. I have like regular cheap earbuds. I have two different phones I can test on pretty much everything I test on. Sounds good to me. I can still understand what I'm saying, but at the same time, I already know what I'm saying. Right. So it's not completely accurate to say that, uh, it's fully clear because obviously there's some things that. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't catch if I didn't understand how I, I say things or how I pause and continue speaking. But I think that's more so just the way the way I talk rather than the audio quality itself. Though I know sometimes my audio settings do get messed up and hopefully this is better. Um Anyway, getting back into talking about the game. Uh, if you guys haven't watched my optimize, uh, optimization for Star Wars uh, video, I definitely recommend watching that. That'll help you with your frames. I know my game probably looks a little bit smooth here. It's more so that there's just not much going on in this entire match. Obviously, there's some desync, but for the most part, there's not like a crazy amount of things going on, which does allow the game to be a lot more smooth than what it normally is. Then obviously, the uh, optimizations I've done you know, clearly makes the game more smooth too. Now in this match particularly, I definitely could have done more damage with a uh, power detonator because there's quite a few times that my thermal just doesn't go off, but also at the same time, um, sustain is not really something that I get to do in this match, so helping my sustain doesn't actually matter here. There is a uh, another build that I was thinking about playing. As somebody wanted to see like a tank cure lethality build. Um, realistically, the only way that you can actually do that without completely throwing is just running the the uh, healing uh, toxic haze, which I've ran a couple of times before. I actually did like what 17k HPS or something on it. It's absolutely insane. Um, obviously, doing that in the AV8 is a little bit different, but. I could definitely run that again and just mess around with like healing and just being a little bit more of uh, an annoyance rather than completely trying to just kill people. Um, I could totally try that just off heal for fun. Like I do um, have fun with that sometimes. I know I don't put those videos out too often. And, you know, he wants to watch a DPS also doing HPS at the same time. It's not as interesting, I guess you would say, because obviously you're limiting both of your potential. You're not fully committing to healing. You're not fully committing to um, damage either. So you're not going to do amazing at both, but you're probably going to do pretty decent at both if you're at least proficient at it. So maybe we'll have that um, next video that it will be like this. Um, I wouldn't necessarily consider it a complete control build, but or not control. Um, Troll build, there we go. Troll, not control, there we go. English. Uh, me good English. Um, would be running elemental confection, but running the single target chain lightning, so power to the force, halted offense. 
that ability actually chunks and it hurts really bad. Uh, when it got nerfed originally, I was hitting 115 Ks before I got nerfed. Now it is not that high still, even though they rebuffed it. It is still like relatively high and it's very good and it definitely helps your single target when you're running elemental convection. I'm not saying that you should probably run it, it's probably not that great. Uh, anytime you can run chain night, it's pretty good. But one thing that uh, you definitely benefit from is getting the ability to use it into Mercenary Reflect, and it will actually hurt them. I know that uh, obviously some people probably didn't know that, but there's probably a lot of people that did. Um, so Power of the Force or Halted Offense just goes to Mercenary Reflect. It is considered a single target ability, but it's classified as AoE, I think. And that's probably why it still goes through, which does make me think that AoE DR also works against it still, which is a weird thing. I uh, probably don't want that to happen because, you know, obviously that will greatly reduce the damage to that single target ability. Then, um, I think after that one, I think we have like one or two videos. Obviously, we play against uh, some mercenaries, so you really get to see it in action and see like why I play it. And I had relatively a good amount of uh, fun and action in those matches, so those will be coming. I have another sharpshooter video coming, and then um, I'm trying to think, I think I have another one. I don't remember what it was though. So. Uh, maybe we'll play some Rage next. I'm not really sure. Haven't decided. Um, I know another thing that I want to try is a implant that isn't terrible, but it definitely doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, the Berserker implant that increases your damage taken by 60%. 3% uh, damage increase is not really worth the 6% damage uh, increase and in da like taken damage. Like that's simulated is arguably better. Uh, because not only do you gain raw damage, you also gain critical. So we'll be trying that. That'll be... That'll be, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you'll, get, you'll just have to see that when it comes. I um, already have a video prepped for that, so if you guys are curious what Berserker's implant does on AP, um, that's cool. It's a little bit more damage. Um, I will tell you, I definitely do take a lot more damage, so I wouldn't recommend it, but, you know, hey, if you're dying all the time anyway, might as well full send it and be completely squishy. And this poor guy got caught by that grenade and to carb. A bad for him, but, you know, with just higher lacrity, you're able to catch those things a little bit more easy without having to wait her global cooldowns. Sometimes in a global cooldown, they're able to force speed away. And coming up on the end of this video here, um, it's not, like, to put it, put it in perspective, it's not always all about gear, right? This isn't just a gear thing, this is also just knowing how to play AP and obviously knowing how to just play the game in general. Like, there's a lot of things that I do that most people don't or don't think about or don't even bother to do that will just make it a little bit more oppressive. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help.